Hello and welcome to this edition of Sound Bites. Today we're going to be talking about overlapping IP addresses in enterprise cloud networking. This is a scenario that many of our customers run into and this is probably where we see it the most. When a customer has a cloud service that they're delivering to a customer or a partner who has private IP space. Now you don't have the ability to ask that customer to change their IP space, so if it's going to overlap with your service, you end up with an overlapping IP issue. We see this in a couple of different scenarios, but this is the most popular or, or the one we see it in the most. Another scenario would be a data center with different business units that have potentially overlapping private IP addresses with a service that's being offered in the cloud. And normally we don't see this because uh, companies do a good job of keeping track of their IPs within their own environments, and that's why we see it more when you're talking to customer sites. And then, and then the last scenario is actually when we have it all in the cloud, but we get overlapping IP addresses between uh, application areas in the cloud. And this arises maybe because of an acquisition or just because there hasn't been communication between the different application environments. Now luckily there's a great solution for this. Uh, Aviatrix provides a capability. Now I'm going to explain this just for scenario number one in the interest of time, but it works exactly the same across all of the scenarios. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the Aviatrix controller and the Aviatrix gateway. And you can see that the Aviatrix gateway ends up being in line between the customer site and the service being provided in the cloud. Now there's very few things that you have to provide here, and it starts with the customer's real IP address. Of course, you need to understand what IP space they're actually using, and that doesn't change, but you need to enter that into the system. Then you provide a virtual IP to the customer. This cloud virtual IP is going to be the IP address that they are using to talk to your service in the cloud. Then there's two more things. One is the customer virtual IP. So this will be the IP address that you're using from the cloud to talk back to the customer. And there's the actual cloud uh, application ID, the real uh, IP address that your service is providing in the cloud. So you enter these four IP addresses and you're ready to go. At this point, the Aviatrix controller sends this information to the gateway. So now the gateway has this information. When the customer wants to talk to your service in the cloud, they use the virtual IP that you've given them. That gets translated to the actual cloud ID as it talks to the service. In the, in the opposite direction, in the response, you use the customer's virtual IP address, which gets translated and then sent to the customer's real IP. Now, a lot went on there in terms of source natting, destination natting, but the only thing you have to provide to the customer is that cloud virtual IP and everything works. So I hope that was interesting soundbite for you on overlapping IPs. If you have any questions, I encourage you to go to info at aviatrix.com and we'll get you in touch with the right solution architects to look at your environment and help you with a solution. Also, check out the Sandbox Starter. You can find this on the homepage of our website. It's a way that you can get going and actually try any of this in your environment anytime you'd like.